Hope was here, by Joan Bauer. Chapter 13. We pulled into the welcome stairways at 8.45 p.m. GT said he thought he'd stop in the kitchen and see how things were going, and I said, while still being respectful, that from what I could see, he needed to take care of himself, and that did not include a stop in the kitchen. You'd think a man running for elected office would have the sense to listen to his body. All right, all right. He climbed the stairs slowly up to his apartment. Thank you for coming with me today, Hope. You're a fine companion. I loved every minute of it, GT. I heard him unlock his door, shut it. I went into the kitchen, planning to ask Braverman to make me a pork chop sandwich. He tenderized the chop better than Addy did, and believe me, I would take that fact to my grave. He was working nights all this week. I saw Addy at the grill instead, putting up orders. Where you been? She asked, keeping her eyes on the food. Good cooks have eyes in the back of their heads like vampires. I started telling her all the places GT and I had gone to, but she cut me off. We've got a situation here, Hope. She was working in choppy, harsh movements. Addie only cooks like that when something's wrong. What? It's Braverman. She took a deep breath. He got beat up. What? He's going to be okay. They broke a couple of ribs. He got some stitches over his eye. When he didn't show up for work, I just kept cooking. I felt a chill in my spine. Addie flipped three burgers, piled garlic mashed potatoes on a plate with balsamic chicken. It's Brenda Babcock's day off. Flo said she took her mother into Milwaukee for hospital tests. Addie slammed a saute pan. What do you think of that coincidence? I closed my eyes. My breath came out like it had been trapped. I called Braverman's house, but his mother said he was sleeping. I called Jillian because I needed to talk to someone. I started crying over the phone and kept saying I didn't know what was wrong with me. I'm not a crier. You care for him, she said. I bristled. We all do. But I think, Hope, you care for him in a deeper way. That's not what I needed to hear. Even if it was, just possibly true. Batten down the hatches. That's what Brenda Babcock had said. I felt a huge wind picking up everything that wasn't nailed down. 8.35 a.m. The wind beat strong. GT was just leaving Braverman's house when I got there. Worry and anger carved in his face. I was holding the cactus I'd gotten for Braverman. $3.95 at Glug's Grocery. Flowers didn't seem right. A cactus was manly. I felt stupid holding it. He looks pretty bad, but you'll cheer him up. GT patted my shoulder. I'm going to do everything I know to do to stop this madness. He marched down the walk but he didn't seem strong. The house next to Braverman's looked abandoned. A broken down car without rear tires was across the street. I rang the bell. Braverman's mother answered, let me in. She was tall and looked scared. She walked with a cane. I'm Hope from the, oh yes, she said smiling. He's talked about you. He has. I saw his twin sisters, Heidi and Hannah. Are you his girlfriend now? Heidi asked giggling. No. I felt my face get hot. I put the cactus behind my back. We work together, that's all. Hannah skipped off, shouting, Eddie, your girlfriend's here. Eddie? I smiled dumbly at his mother. Eddie, your girlfriend's here. I've always appreciated being an only child. A door down the hall creaked open. In the shadows, I saw Braverman. His face was swollen. He had a large bandage over his left eye. He stepped out into the light. My heart broke for him. Oh, Braverman. I held out the cactus. How do you feel? Like three guys beat me up. I walked over to him. There were three? He nodded. It must hurt a lot. I don't recommend the experience. I almost took his hand, but didn't. We walked down the hall. All the furniture seemed old, not much on the walls. I didn't picture him living in a place like this. The nicest thing I could see was a big wooden case filled with books. The small, cramped kitchen had dirty dishes in the sink, a milk carton on the counter, cereal boxes lined side by side. He motioned me out onto the porch. It had two plastic chairs. I sat on one. He stood before me stiffly like Frankenstein. I looked down at a little garden. The morning sun shone bright. It seemed to dance across the yard, touching the flowers. No matter what happens, girl, remember the power of the light. Do you know who beat you up? I asked. They didn't introduce themselves. They said I had a big mouth about the campaign and I'd better shut it. He looked at his feet. I don't know which was worse, getting hit or not being able to hit back. 
I swallowed hard. I was really worried about you, Braverman. Thanks. A weird silence. For the first time in my life, Hope, I think I could have killed somebody. If I'd have broken free and gotten one of those guys, I don't think I could have stopped hitting him. I think he would have stopped. I hoped he would have. He clenched his fists. I'm scared how angry I feel. I'm yelling at my mom and my little sisters. I keep seeing those guys in ski masks holding my arms and I couldn't break free. I wasn't sure what to say. A big part of me wanted to hug him. I know all about anger, Braverman. I told him about my boxing. He was quiet. And sometimes, I added, I have to remind myself who I'm mad at so I don't take it out on the wrong people. Like the cook, he offered. We laughed. He looked down again. Will you do me a favor? Sure. He stood up straight, closed his eyes at the effort that took. Millstone's speaking at the Methodist church picnic on Saturday. I need you to help me get there. He had to be kidding. I just need a ride. I'm not supposed to drive until the bandage comes off my eye. I don't think my mother will, you know. Braverman, did they give you strong painkillers, or is your brain just naturally impaired? He thought about that. Both, he said. A rash of teenagers signed up to work on GT's campaign as news of Braverman's beating hit the streets, and Jillian spread the word online. GT stood on the steps in front of Town Hall. I will not allow this evil to prosper. I demand a full investigation by Deputy Babcock to bring those criminals to justice. Sheriff Greeb strolled out the front door. I'll be handling any investigations around here. I do not believe, Sheriff. That will lead us to the truth. That's your problem, snarled Greebs as he walked to his squad car. On Thursday, the Mulhoney messenger carried this on the front page. A Political Lesson by E.A. Braverman. This week, three men dragged me into an alley and beat me up. They took turns holding me down. They took turns hitting me. I didn't owe them money. I hadn't done anything to hurt them. They didn't take my wallet. All they tried to take was my right to support G.T. Stoops' candidacy. They told me I'd better shut my mouth about politics in this town. I don't know their names or where they live, but I would like to say something to all three of them. It didn't work. Oh, sure, you broke three of my ribs. I have stitches in my forehead and I won't be able to work for a while. But you've only made me more determined to speak out and find the truth about the corruption that has a hold of this town. For a few days after the beating, I told myself that if I'd been stronger, I could have pushed you away. The truth is, you are the weak ones. And you've made your cause that much weaker by showing how low you would sink to get Eli Millstone re-elected. I hope the sheriff's office catches you. But even more than that, I hope that people will see the fear that's really behind your actions. You're afraid of the truth. You know what? You should be. Saturday morning. The teenagers of Mulhoney had had enough. I got Braverman his ride to the Methodist church picnic. Fifty-seven kids decided to join us. My heart was thumping with anger and deep caring as Braverman dragged his bruised self into the big tent set up on the front lawn and stood smack in front of Eli Millstone, who was droning on about truth, justice, and the American way. Mr. Mayor, could you explain what the sheriff's department is doing to find the three men who attacked me? Millstone was shocked at first, but looked at Braverman with fake compassion. We're going to get to the bottom of what happened to you, son. I give you my word. Your word? Braverman hobbled closer. Mr. Mayor, your word isn't worth anything. Adam raised his fist in the air and started the cheer. Tell the truth! Tell the truth! We screamed it loud until the tent poles shook. Until finally, Eli Millstone stormed out, fuming. You think all teenagers care about our musicians and movie stars? Spend some time in Wisconsin. We'll blow your socks off. On the mouse front, we had big news. The Mulhoney Messenger carried it on the front page. The paper was down to eight pages now. It used to be 20. But Cecilia Culpepper vowed to keep publishing it no matter what. The lab report showed no rodent hairs in the welcome stairway's kitchen. The mouse had been dead for at least a week. It couldn't have come from our diner. That sweet couple had been arrested twice for passing bad checks. And the corker, said Deputy Babcock, sipping coffee at the counter, is that couple said a man in Milwaukee paid them to do their mouse act in the welcome stairways. What kind of person would do that? Flo asked. I don't know, Brenda Babcock replied, but I'm going to find out. Days passed. Hot, muggy ones. Not that I've ever expected much else from July. Braverman was in direct contact with his inner porcupine. 
He'd been consumed with getting Millstone. Revenge of the Giant Grill Man. He'd become a symbol of public outrage, walking around town with his bandage over his eye and his black and blue face. But, as Sid Vol said, it sure was a good reminder to the voters. Stoop for mayor. Was showing up on more and more lawns and bumper stickers. But the juggling, joking Braverman was gone. He was serious and fuming, morning till night. I mentioned it to him gently after a campaign meeting. I swear to God, he vowed, I'm not going to let Millstone win. I just don't think you should carry the whole campaign on your shoulders. Just lay off, Hope. It really hurt me when he said that. Braverman's injury was wreaking havoc in the kitchen. He couldn't work a whole shift. Addie was pulling killer hours. She tends not to suffer in silence. Once, GT rolled up his sleeves to help her, and in 20 minutes of them working side by side, my whole future in Wisconsin could have gone up in smoke. Thankfully, GT saw it too. He backed out gracefully and said, Well, Addie, I sure don't want to ruffle your feathers any more than I have. Addie muttered that if she had any feathers left, it was only by the grace of God. Out at the counter, GT said to me, You got any advice on how to get along better with your aunt? I looked at his determined face, felt he could take it. GT, truth is costly. You've got to give her full reign in the kitchen. There's no other way. Hands off, huh? Completely. GT looked at his hands and put them in his pockets. GT's energy was up and down. His fever had risen slightly, and his doctor said he had to avoid most people until his white blood count went higher. That scared all of us. GT said this would be part of his life for a while, but he was like a caged bull waiting to get free. I was standing in his apartment, which was across the hall from ours. I brought up some of Addie's disease-fighting chicken soup with egg noodles. I'd triple washed my hands with antibacterial soap and sprayed Lysol disinfectant on my sneakers. I could tell he was hurting. I was Braverman, he asked. I kept it light. He's healing. He's working things out. A huge sigh. How's it going downstairs? Good. We're staying busy. He slapped the table, stared at the oil painting on the wall of a little sailboat riding the waves of a choppy ocean. Its sail puffed full with the wind. That's where I want to be, he said with irritation. You're a sailor? Not much of one. I want to be out in the thick of it, Hope. Not stuck in here like some patient. I looked at the painting. I feel like that boat sometimes. How so? Well, sometimes I feel pretty small, and the waves around me are big, but I still have this feeling that I'm going to make it to shore. Harrison would have loved that. GT smiled. My mother painted it. She's good. She said it was how she saw troubles. A good sailor knows how to steer into the wind, to use the power to his advantage. You don't become a real sailor until you sail in a storm. Then you test what you know. You see what you and the boat and the wind are made of. I looked at the painting for the longest time. Thought of the high waves of my mom leaving me. The big winds of Gleason Beale that almost capsized me. I wish there was another way to learn, GT. He flopped on the couch. I don't like the process either. He picked up a beautiful piece of dark wood that was sitting on the coffee table. Held it out to me. Feel that. It was smooth like glass. That piece of mahogany came from a ship that sailed the seas over a hundred years ago. See how deep the color is? It didn't start out that way. It was the pounding of the waves and the stretching of that vessel by the sea over the years that helped make this wood so beautiful. I held the wood. Didn't want to put it down. I know how hard it is sometimes to be strong, GT. He looked at me with such kindness. I know you do. I covered the soup to keep it warm and hoped with all my heart that he'd get well. Losing GT seemed like the worst thing that could ever happen. We lost Sid Vol instead. He'd been called to Virginia to provide mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation to the campaign of a congressman who was visiting a school and announced that Abraham Lincoln was the 13th president of the United States instead of the 16th. A little kid had corrected him, and then the whole class started laughing. A TV camera had been there to capture the drama. The press was crucifying that man. It was, Adam said, the ultimate test of the ultimate spin doctor. But it meant we were down a consultant in GT's campaign not to mention an adult. I was trying to write this all in a letter to Harrison and Miriam. Trying to explain my life up here with GT's campaign and how important it was. Trying to explain why Braverman got beat up and the depth of our non-relationship. There's this guy that I told you about before. I'm kind of interested in him, except we work together and we're really just friends. Sometimes I think he likes me, and other times I don't think he does, and I'm finding the whole thing really irritating. Miffed in Mulhoney. 
I walked over to my Repogel globe, which was sitting on my dresser. I gave it a slow spin, stopped it at Wisconsin, put my finger on Milwaukee, moved it slightly to the left. Mulhooney, of course, was not on the globe. Such a small, hidden place in the world. I'm here, Dad. I said it louder than I'd expected. I waited, listening. Life has too many unsolved mysteries.